and the big picture here in this world is that we're all going to die faster than we think because the ecosystem is at dangerous levels. <laughs> so, uh, wow. You know, that's a lot to think about and that's a lot to comprehend. And, you know, as I said, in the nineties, this is something that I was very serious about. Very, I talked about as a fucking kid, I was 13, you know, and I was just worried about the earth and pollution and, and, you know, they made a lot of commercials back then where like, don't pollute, uh, don't, you know, don't, uh, throw your shit on the floor, please recycle. They would make commercials. And do we see those commercials anymore? We don't because they think that this is normal shit that we should be thinking about. It would make easier. They just, the government has made us very dependent on them, you guys, period. That's all. And to think about where our foods are coming from and our clothes, our clothes, do you know, I read the other day, because <laughs> my mind just goes and, and like, I start researching these things, like 90% of Walmart's products are from China. For one, we're outsourcing, America's outsourcing, my job's definitely outsourcing, and I get yelled at it about it because I get told fucking racist things as fuck every day and it's really hard and I can't wait for the day that I don't have to work for somebody else where I can work for myself because then I can live a life that is not full of my, my carbon footprint will be smaller. That's what my goal in life is to do is make my carbon footprint smaller. And I've been made fun of by people because I'm like, do we really need this product? Do we really need this item? Do we really need to purchase this? Do we need that? And so I would get told that I'm cheap and other things. No, we're killing the earth with more shit that you're buying. Do you need these products? No. And that's another thing that people are doing. You know, yeah, we're looking at our little phones with the TikTok and doing all that other shit. We're also fucking buying things that we don't need. How much of Amazon is fucking things that we don't need? Most of that shit is from China. Our phones, Samsung, I think it's made in China. My phone. iPhone definitely is made in China. Believe me, because I stopped. I, in, when I was in school, 2007, when the first iPhone came out, this is how I know these things, you guys. <laughs> I'm such a freak, but I, I'm okay. Like I'm full of knowledge here. Uh, when the first iPhone came out was in 2007 and then for the 2012, was that when it was in 2012 when it was Olympics in China? I think it was 2000. Let me fucking Google that real quick. Um, what year? The Olympics. In China, when? Um, yeah. No, it was just the same year when I started school. Wow, I thought it was later. So I started school in um, August 2007 or 2008. Okay? Here's a little story. <laughs> so I started, uh, I went back to college in 2007, 2008. I started, I didn't go back. I started college in 2007 or 2008. And so the Winter Olympics we're starting in China. And so China's fucking air quality was so horrible. It was black. Like this is, I had to do, maybe this is my calling. I don't know, but I had to do an article on the pollution and they were trying to get rid of the pollution. They were trying to do all the things they were trying to like make, there to be less people traveling. They were trying to do all these things because the tr the pollution was so horrible that they were going to cancel the Olympics. I think it was 2008. Yeah, I think that was the only, yeah, 2008. Um, sorry, I'm like looking. And so from that knowledge of how disgusting it was, like how horrible the pollution was and like 
us needing to do something. Like, China needs to do something. All of our shit comes from China. This is such a stressful thing. Everything is outsourced. My job outsources f- fucking calls. Like, horribly to different... We have, Like, Brazil and Mexico. Oh my god. So, anyhow. So the only way... Okay, so first of all, let me take a breath because I'm like going all over the place because I'm starting to get tired (laughs) and because I'm getting overexcited here and stressed. So here we go. So the way that we can make our carbon footprint smaller is one, stop outsourcing. We need to stop outsourcing. American made. We need to go American. We need to go local, period. First of all, we need to go local. Start our own gardens in their backyard. Um, I can't say that we can, you know, grow our own tuna fish and shit. Well, you could, but I'm sure that's not going to happen. Um, do local for everything that you eat, everything that you can. Um, you know, that's something that you def- It's going to be a little bit more expensive, but it's going to be worth it. Because you're, if you're like-minded as I am like mind minded with me, then you would fucking, um, do what you got to do. So, cause it's really hard for me cause I, I live with my family and my hands are so dry. I've washed my hands so much today. Sorry. Um, and we eat family style because we're a family and we've always eaten that way since my mom has always done that. My dad's always done that. We're a fucking family. Like we eat together every day for dinner. And the days that we don't, it's, I have not eaten since I've been back. I've eaten mostly at home. So, cause we don't really eat out. And if we eat out, we get it in like tonight. That's why I'm sick. So anyway, um, so the ways that we can fix this issue, making our carbon footprint smaller is by Local, doing local, organic, local. Uh, stop buying China shit if you can. That's going to be hard because everything is Chinese. You know, um, a lot of our products in America come from China. And that's a hard thing and it always has. Um, the deforestation. That is something that needs to stop in the Amazon for one. So these are like the major things. These are the... The, the, the big things here. So what, as an, as a community, a whole, a, a nation, a world, we need to seriously ban slavery. And that's something that's not going to happen because it's a $150 billion a year industry. Oh, man. And so we have to think about what we can do as individuals. And like I said, local stuff, buying local, stop buying shit you don't need. Your carbon footprint goes up. The more electricity you use, the more water you use, the more of all of this that you use, your carbon footprint is going way up. The bigger vehicle that you drive, you know, there's certain ways that you can do to make your carbon footprint smaller and, you know, don't listen to the people that make fun of you when you're you're saying, you know, we shouldn't, if we don't need it, why buy it? Because we don't need things. A lot of the things we don't need. And it's just to have, because since the fucking 80s, f- fucking Reaganomics, fucking Reagan and his bullshit and trinkle down bullshit. If you, oh man. These things are just a lot to take in. (laughs) So it is rough to know that was, I'm still on, like, was it 2008 when fucking China was, what country was it? Let me ask. Oh, what was that? Oh, let me ask. What year was it that the 
Olympics were having an issue because of pollution. Um, it says 2008 still. Yeah, I guess it was 2008. Pollu- it was the air pollution. It was so bad, you guys. And I know some of my listeners are younger, but fucking look at it. Like, it is insane. And I, and, um, the first thing we need to work on is our own carbon footprint because as a fucking hu- whole thing, like, there's no way that the bigger things that need to be done is are, is going to happen in our lifetime unless there's some very strong people in office that won't fucking be a puss like fucking cinema and back down on what they fucking actually promised to their people. Um, cause she's definitely ran as a Democrat, but she's fucking making decisions as a Republican, as a woman who didn't fucking swear on a fucking, uh, Bible. And now she's wearing a cross around her neck. She's definitely flipped fucking her switch there. Anyhow. So I just want everybody to really think about it. And I want people to uh, understand that this is a serious thing, because especially if you are having children, your children are leaving, you're leaving behind, are going to be picking up the way that you spend money. Like they learn, you learn from your, your family. And this is something that I definitely learned about. And I've no, I, I know I talked about it before because with my spending, I'm like my mother and like my father, like my dad does so much research before he buys anything. And my mom doesn't buy anything, but then sometimes he goes the cheap route on certain things, which he shouldn't go the cheap route. And, you know, he should go, you know, there's different ends of spending power. You go to the medium or, you know, higher end, but my dad likes to go to the cheap route and I don't like to go the cheap route on certain things. There's certain things that you need to fucking buy that are on a medium or high level. So, um, so the way that you spend is the way that your children are going to learn how to spend. So if you're spending willy nilly and blowing money on bullshit, then your kids are going to learn this and they're going to pass it down to their kids. So that is something that is a generational thing as well. This could be a generational traumatic thing here if you really think about it because the way that you're spending can affect your children's children, children, and that affects what you're buying and how many slaves you have. So what I mean about the slaves is it took that many people to produce the things that you have. My clothes are from Walmart because I lived in Colorado and I had to buy warm clothes. And so I went to fucking uh, Walmart and I bought long sleeves. So I have like I haven't bought any new clothes except my Christmas outfit in a year. And um, because I don't like to spend money if I don't need to buy it. I have bought new shoes, though for myself. Um, I bought some Toms for walking, not like long distances, but general, um, general casual wear. And I bought my mom some Toms for her because she doesn't have, uh, she has some arthritis in her foot or something like that. She has to put medication on. And I bought my nephew, um, some Toms too. It was all on sale. So, you know, that's just how I roll. I like saved, like I paid for half the price of what they are. And, uh, because I'm very conscientious of my spending and my carbon footprint. Um, so yeah, you know, and so I am, I've been trying my hardest now living back at home with my family. We eat family style, so it's really hard to eat local when you're eating family style. Uh, so I'm going to start trying this week and I am going to have to make my food before my mom starts cooking because all we eat is Mexican food and it's really, uh, not healthy because there's not a, it could be healthy sometimes, but we need different, um, we need to add more vegetables. I don't know if anybody understands that when your family doesn't grow up on vegetables because you don't have much money. Like, I remember getting government cheese. Like, big blocks of government cheese when we were little. Um, but, here we are now. And I'm going to worry about my own footprint, as I have my whole life. And I'm going to keep not spending the way that I spend. Like, I've been in, been trying to buy a new laptop for, I would say, three months And I'm just too afraid to, maybe even longer, 
And I'm just afraid to because I don't, you know, for one, I don't want to purchase something that's going to just die on me because I've bought two 